Do you think you might have low B12 symptoms or symptoms of B12 deficiency? In this video, we'll cover the most commonly recognized low B12 symptoms, some other not so common, um, and what things you want to think about when you are considering low B12 symptoms, other things you might want to rule out in addition to the low B12 symptoms. And then, of course, uh, at the end, uh, give you some uh, things to consider doing uh, if it does seem like you do have uh, low B12 based on the symptoms I outlined. Hi, this is Dr. Terranella. And when you have low B12, uh, your symptoms may be a little bit vague, and oftentimes people will attribute these to other health issues or life circumstances, uh, such as, you know, haven't been getting as much sleep lately, or I'm not eating as good recently, I'm working more, uh, I'm not exercising as much. But I want you to keep in mind that uh, B12 could be the cause. And that's why I'm making this video is to uh, help people become more acquainted with low B12 symptoms and more easily identify when you might have uh, low B12. And also, uh, you know, maybe what to do about it too at the end. Um, so first and most common is fatigue. Uh, another way uh, to say fatigue is low energy. Um, and fatigue can present in a lot of different ways. So, you know, it's hard to, you know, say what's low energy. Um, usually I have people, you know, say, what's your energy on a scale from one to 10? And if it's less than seven, I would say that's low energy. Um, but a lot of times people don't identify with that per se. They may say, well, you know, I'm having a little bit more brain fog, you know, difficulty with recall of words or names, um, or just, you know, thought process isn't, uh, working as efficiently, you're not grasping, uh, certain topics or, um, points that people are learning new material or points that people are trying to get across to you, for example. Um, another way to describe uh, fatigue would be malaise, just sort of feeling kind of like apathetic or, you know, not interested in doing things. Uh, the basic idea is you don't have the same level of motivation or get up and go that you used to. Other people may describe it as, you know, the to-do to list is just sort of piling up and, uh, you're just not interested in doing those things. All that could be, you know, attributed to low B12. Um, and in more severe cases, you may actually feel depressed, um, uh, you know, just mildly depressed mood, or you could out also have clinical depression. Um, so um, that all goes in the category of low energy. Um, Another common uh, B12 deficiency, which you may not identify with the above, but you may have uh, this one, which is, you know, we put this in the category of more neuropathic type of things. Um, so this is oftentimes, oftentimes called neuropathy, or uh, you may experience it as numbness and tingling in your hands or feet. Um, it's not all, it doesn't always have to be in the hands or feet. It could be uh, really anywhere in your body, in your leg, or, or something like that. Um, uh, it could also be not just numbness, but like some people describe it as like a vibratory sensation uh, anywhere in your body. Um, you could be experiencing that. Um, and sometimes even like ringing in the ears, but the basic idea is like any neuropathic pain could be caused or neuropathic symptom, uh, which is basically just uh, something going on with the uh, nerves in your body could be attributed to uh, B12 deficiency. So I want you to keep that in mind. Um, and then the last one uh, is shortness of breath or decreased exercise tolerance. Um, that could also cause uh, be caused by uh, low B12. Um, and, uh, you know, it's a, com it's a common symptom that people do have and, you know, oftentimes overlook it for other reasons. Um, so these are all, you know, those three categories, but, you know, their specifics within each of those categories are all symptoms of B12 deficiency. Um, if you have these symptoms, if, uh, more than one of these symptoms, it makes more sense that maybe uh, those symptoms are attributed to low B12. Um, but we don't want to get, you know, too focused on just one thing. Uh, 
these symptoms could be attributed to a lot of other things. Uh, some of these symptoms could be attributed to like iron deficiency or heart disease, multiple sclerosis, uh, fibromyalgia, just having an infection for a long time or allergies, chronic fatigue syndrome, uh, folate deficiency, um, you know, uh, fibromyalgia, I, don't know if I said that already, but many, there's many other, uh, health issues that can cause some of these symptoms. Um, I mean, for instance, for, for instance, shortness of breath. I mean, there's multiple types of anemia. B12 can cause anemia, uh, but so can iron deficiency. Um, there's other Mediterranean uh, type of things that can, uh, genetic things that can cause uh, anemia, which can also cause shortness of breath, lung issues, asthma. Um, and uh, so, so it's important to, you know, uh, keep that in mind. There's, you know, lots of things that can cause some of these symptoms. But um, testing for B12 is fairly easy and inexpensive. Um, and uh, when we test your B12 levels and it actually, actually shows up as low, it's pretty clear that, you know, your body isn't getting enough B12. Um, even in the mid-range of the B12 reference range, you know, like less than 500, I would say, you're, you're probably not getting adequate amounts of B12. Um, so, um, so that's pretty clear, but when your levels are high, that doesn't 